this guide, we'll take a closer look at how tribal quests or beast tribes work in Final Fantasy XIV. We will talk about how tribes work, the kind of rewards you can expect, and also the differences in how the tribes function across expansions. There are three styles of ways tribes have functioned, with the first covering only a Realm Reborn, the second covering only Heavensward, and the third being used from Stormblood till Endwalker. We can probably expect this third style to continue for the foreseeable future. The way the styles differ is mainly in how you earn reputation with the tribes, what you can and cannot do with that, as well as what items they have for sale. Now then, let's start with what they all have in common. Every day, you have a tribe quest allowance of 12. This means you can take up to 12 quests from tribes in total. This number resets at the same daily reset as many other things in the game, including daily roulettes. Additionally, each tribe has either exactly three quests for you every day, or a multiple of three quests. I will get back to this for the Arealm Reborn tribes. When you pick up a quest, the game locks in which job you took the quest as, usually only allowing you to progress the quest as that job. At the same time, the quest will also scale somewhat to the job's level, limited by a minimum and a maximum, enclosing each tribe's level range to their respective expansions. The Arealm Reborn tribes are more complicated in this regard too. Whenever you max out a reputation rank for a tribe, they will grant you a story quest, and once completed, you will rank up to the next rank, both unlocking more options of items to purchase, but also giving you access to three new daily quests. This does indeed mean you can do six quests for a single tribe on these days. If you have not yet turned in your current batch of daily quests for a tribe in these situations, they will give you access to the three new quests once you hand in the last one. Remember, the daily allowance of tribe quests is spent when you pick up the quest, not when you hand it in. The daily quests always award some experience, a decent amount assuming the job is within its level range, as this scales too. It also awards a unique tribe currency, which you can use to purchase the tribe's offerings. For the most part, assuming you only purchase the unique items, you should always have the currency to purchase new unique items like minions, mounts and emotes as soon as they unlock. Next, let's talk about the modern style, covering everything from Stormblood and onward. To be precise, this means the following tribes. Kojin, Ananta and Namatsu representing Stormblood, Pixies, Kitari and Dwarves representing Shadowbringers, and so far the Arkasodara representing Endwalker. Every daily quest awards precisely 60 reputation, which can sometimes be cut short if the cap to max out the current reputation rank is not a multiple of 60. This is normal, as there are no other ways to gain reputation. Once your reputation maxes out, you are offered a quest, and once it is completed, your reputation level is increased and the reputation bar is emptied. If you reach the highest rank attainable, the bar will read 0 out of 0 and stay empty. Additionally, if there is nothing more you can do for the tribe, the color of the text indicating your reputation rank will turn orange. Exclusive to the Stormblood tribes, you need to max out all of them and then do a final quest that binds them all together. For Shadowbringers and Endwalker, this is not the case and you simply max out at the highest rank. Regarding unlocking tribes, take note that tribes are sometimes unlocked by unassuming regular side quests, meaning that the prerequisite to unlock the quest that unlocks the tribe can be a completely regular side quest. If you want to unlock a particular tribe and don't know where to start, my best advice would be to look up the tribe itself. It is usually well documented which quest lines are necessary to unlock it. To take an example, the Arkasodara tribe is unlocked by doing the full quest lines for both What's in Apparent and Stepchild, which can be a while if you haven't started. Generally speaking, you may need to complete the vast majority of side quests for the relevant zone. Now, pretty much every single tribe in the game offers at least one minion, one mount, usually a relevant orchestrian role, and some housing stuff. So rather than listing every single little thing the tribes offer, let me highlight some things that stand out instead. 
The Dwarf Tribe of Shadowbringers offers a special dance emote. All three of the Stormblood Tribes also each offer a special emote, and doing the final combined quest will also grant an additional emote. Be aware that among these tribes, the Dwarf Tribe only offers Crafter Quests, the Kitari only offers Gatherer Quests, and Namatsu offer quests for both Crafters and Gatherers. Additionally, all of these modern style tribes start you at rank 3 reputation, and the Shadowbringers tribes can be maxed out in 18 to 21 days to rank 7, whereas the Stormblood tribes can take around a month to rank 8. Moving on to the Heavensward tribes. While these tribes work mostly similar to the Stormblood tribes, the main difference is that the Moguls and Vanu Vanu only gain 50 reputation per quest and the Vath gain 70 causing a significant difference in pace of progression. Both the Vanu Vanu and Mughal tribes offer a dance and a glamour item, a pair of visors and shoes respectively. The Vath don't offer anything particularly remarkable aside from the usual mount and minions and such. Completing all three offers a final quest that grants an additional dance. Take note that the Mughal tribe only offers crafter quests and also that the Mughal and Vanu Vanu tribes start at rank 1 rather than rank 3, making the journey even longer. Finally, the Our Realm Reborn tribes. These tribes work differently in multiple ways. First, when you rank up your reputation with these tribes, they add an additional set of 3 daily quests to take every day that grant more reputation than the previous. This effectively means that at higher reputation ranks, you could almost spend your entire allowance on a single tribe if you wanted to, although it would not be the most efficient. Another difference is that there are 5 tribes, the Ixali standing out as the Crafter Gatherer tribe among 4 combat tribes. Another difference is that all of these tribes start at rank 1, and that while the 4 combat tribes max out at rank 4, Ixali maxes out at rank 7, making it the longest tribe to max out. The combat tribes offer quests in a level range around the mid 40s to 50, and each of the up to 3 sets of dailies they offer will grant increasingly more reputation. The starter set granting 10 each, the middle set granting 14, and the final granting 20. This allows you to gain 60 reputation at most from 3 dailies, however, if you want to, you could spend up to 9 to gain 132 reputation. The Ixali tribe is the most unique of all the tribes. First, they will grant you a pair of gloves that you will sometimes be required to wear while crafting things. Most of the items they request you to make will be trivial to craft, so this should not be a problem. Next, while the Ixali will offer 3 daily quests per reputation rank, they will also always offer the deliverance quest once a day, granting 70 reputation for handing in real crafted items. Take note that you do not have to be the one crafting them. Each set of dailies, just like the other 4 tribes, offer increasingly larger amount of reputation for completion. Starting at 20, then increasing to 24, 29, 35, 42 and finally 50. Meaning that making use of your entire allowance on Ixali could award you a whopping 509 reputation per day. Once all 5 A Realm Reborn tribes are maxed out, they will offer a final combined quest, and once that is completed, your rank with all of them will jump to rank 8. Not that it changes much. Each of the A Realm Reborn tribes offers minions, some housing items, and a mount. Amalja and Sylph tribes additionally offer an Orchestrion role. I should mention that, if you have ever gone out of your way to purchase some of the cheaper mounts on the menu for irregular tomestones, so called mock tomes, you may very well already have all of these mounts, as they are always on offer for this event. However, despite all these sort of meh rewards, the final combined quest surely offers you something of great value, right? Well, it offers you... a mask? Yeah, a mask. That's it. If you like it, that's great though. Now with every existing tribe as of the making of this guide covered, let's talk a little bit about an extra bonus of tribes. Every tribe, in addition to the items I have highlighted throughout this video, also gives you access to certain other, less important items. For example, the Heavensward tribes each offer a few glamour outfits, and the Arelm Reborn tribes offer easy access to certain dyes and materials. 
Although sometimes these items probably will be found cheaper on the market board. The main takeaway is that even if you don't find anything from a tribe particularly enticing, it may be convenient to have it maxed out in case you need something from them later. In case you are interested in the advice, in my opinion, the most effective way to max out tribes would be to focus on a few at a time, make sure to try to make space for 3 extra dailies when a tribe is about to rank up. The best tribes to save for last are the Arelma Born ones, since you can invest extra daily allowance in these, especially Ixali, which can easily take all 12 on its own if you fancy. Beyond this, there's not much to worry about with efficiency on tribes. You can get a decent amount of experience for leveling extra jobs by doing them with level appropriate jobs. 51 to 60 for Heavensward, 61 to 70 for Stormblood, 71 to 80 for Shadowbringers, and 81 to 90 for Endwalker. As far as I remember, the A Realm Reborn tribes grant very little experience. Their minimum level requirements vary, increasing with the higher rank quests. So given the small experience reward, it may be easier to just assume the requirement is level 50. That is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful or interesting. And if you did, you could like the video or subscribe to get notified when next I post a video. If you have any questions or anything to add, please do leave a comment down below. Fun fact, looking at recent tribes would make you think they all sell appropriate materia but that would be wrong. This trend of being able to purchase appropriate materia from a tribe is a new one started in Shadowbringers, and the only exception to this rule is the Ixali, who sell grade 1 to 3 crafter and gatherer materia. Everything else before Shadowbringers just simply don't have any materia on offer. You can fortunately still buy appropriate materia elsewhere, like for instance with scripts, 